that's it for game two, and half our starters sat out, but we all watched it twice. Steve wants to break down the PED report by Al Jazeera. We have some injuries to worry about with Jones and Doxon. We got the Bills coming up in an all-important game three of preseason. I got a tattoo on the inside of my arm, and it says the Hogsty starts right now. <laughs> Welcome to the Hogstyle, with your crew, Alex Zeese, Steve Thomas, and Robbie Duncan. And welcome to this week's episode. Uh, Robbie, how are you doing? I see you on there in your uh, tank top like a real lineman is in this time of year. <laughs> yeah, I'm good, man. Yeah. Ready to... Talk some Redskins. Ready to talk some football. Uh, Steve, you, you watched the game at 2.30 in the morning. No, no, no. Actually, I didn't. I uh, I did watch it the next morning. Yeah? Uh, I did not step till, you know, I did not watch the game that late. I figured it wouldn't be productive. I believe we got to clarify something for you. Do you actually have a tattoo no. on the inside of your arm? No. <laughs> and if it does, does it say the hog sty starts now, or does it just say the hog sty? No, I do not have a tattoo on the inside of my arm. See, if you were into tabloid smut like me... You would know that it's a dig at Robert Griffin's new side piece that he's been seeing, uh, where he got a tattoo you know, of a 23-year-old girl's name on the inside of his arm right after the guy getting divorced. You know, you mean that Browns quarterback? Yeah, yeah, yeah. right. Exactly. I, I, the Browns I do love, quarterback. but I do love the tabloid nonsense. So. I don't. I, I mean, you know what? It's the guy's personal life. Do I agree with his lifestyle choice? You know, I, I don't know. I mean, I, who knows what happened? I don't know. I don't care. It's the personal life of a guy who's not a redskin. That's so, true. You know, it good is Rob- he is not a Redskin right now. Could you imagine the circus we'd be dealing with? That's what I was just about to say. I'm, I'm really glad that, you know, it, it's. I'm glad to say now that he is gone. Mm-hmm. We don't have any more media, excuse me, media distractions. And you know, it it, it was a headache. Right. You know, it, a lot of us were fans of him, and and yeah, still are for the most part. I am. I'm still pr- pretty much a fan of him, but I'm a fan of him. The, the distraction and and constant drama just uh-huh. surrounding him just made it almost too much to bear you know i'm i'm, I'm glad that this team's finally boring right. now right well and, you know he did play well in game 2 you know of cleveland's second game though yeah they're yeah. they're running they're running that same 2012 offense they're mm-hmm. really running more of a baylor offense more yeah. than the 2012 yeah yeah a that's why well. yeah, yeah baylor baylor's offense was big influence on 2012 but yeah yeah. But it, it looks like they've just gone back to dumbing it down for Robert so he can be successful and not running this you know pro-style thing where he's asked to do too much. Yeah. Isn't that the smart thing to do, though? I mean, you know, you adapt to what your players can do. It makes a lot of sense, you know, as long as he can stay upright in it. But I'd just like to give everybody out there a bit of advice. If, if you're married and you're going to get a divorce, I'm sorry, tragic. But if you then, during your separation, have a new girlfriend, do not get – her full first and last name tattooed on you. Right. I think that's a good bit of advice, and that's really what I, Alex was I, saying. How about I'll, I'll put this out there. If you're happily married, and you know, I think we can at least say half of us are married. I, I don't know if we'll always say we're all happily married, because <laughs> let's be honest, marriage is tough sometimes. But if you're married to somebody, even for 15 years, just don't get their name tattooed on your arm, because it, it's like a curse. That is a natural curse to any relationship is getting that person's name tattooed on you somewhere. Yeah, it's it's the Madden curse. Yeah, it, it is. It's like the Madden curse <laughs> of marriage. Well, let's move as on. As soon as to... you get a name tattooed, it's over. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, let's move on from, you know, tabloid nonsense to slightly less tabloid nonsense, Steve. There was a big report by Al Jazeera about PD right. use, not just in the NFL, in the, um, but all, all throughout sports. Uh, yeah, there was. You have some of the details on this. Break it down for us. Well, really what I wanted to, to discuss is how the NFL is treating this Al Jazeera report, because I think that's what's interesting. The The basic background is that Al Jazeera America did a report in which it cited a, 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 it cited a source who claimed that uh, a bunch of NFL players, Peyton Manning, James Harrison, Julius Peppers, um, Mike Neal, and a bunch of Major League Baseball players all received – 
PEDs from a source, and and this guy was one of the sources that shipped suppose, allegedly these PEDs to people. The guy has recanted his story completely. He said, right. you know, he completely uh, uh, recanted his story. What's interesting to me is number one, the NFL in about thirty seconds uh, absolved Peyton Manning of all responsibility whatsoever. Right, and this, this <laughs> you know they didn't just let him. Months, right, I mean, yeah, this, yeah, yeah, that does. They didn't just let him retire, not say anything. They absolved him of responsibility. Right. MLB quickly punted on it, you know, because the guy recanted his story. But here's what's interesting: the NFL is re- now requiring Harrison, Peppers, Matthews, and Neal to come interview with the NFL about it. Mm-hmm. But what's what is interesting is this relates back to the Tom Brady thing a little bit because the NFL punished Tom Brady. Uh, under uh, Article 46 of the CBA mm-hmm. for conduct detrimental to the NBA, to the NFL because he didn't cooperate with the inflated ball um, right, right, right. with the inflated scandal. ball invest. Yeah, scandal, and that went to a court of appeals, if everybody recalls. And the NFL won, and Tom Brady lost. And so what that meant is that the NFL has a broader uh, scope of enforcement when it comes to the conduct detrimental to the NFL clause. So you just fast forward to the James Harrison thing. Um, this is really a, a, a performance enhancing drug issue first and foremost, because, and there's a separate policy. It's very, very detailed. Um, it, it, it goes very specifically about what to do about PEDs, how it's discovered, you know, what the NFL can do, what the players can do and what the NFL has done. And it doesn't give the NFL broad power. So what Roger Goodell has done is dumped it over into the CBA and said, well, if you don't cooperate with our investigation, now you're not in violation of the PED policy, which is really what it should be. You're in violation of the collective bargaining agreement, you know, and it's just now, mind you, there's no credible evidence. What they have is a, is a, is a recanted report, not only a recanted report, but one from Al Jazeera, you know, and they're forcing Harrison, Peppers, Matthews, and Neal to, to come in to the NFL offices, and apparently Harrison may be doing it at the Steelers facility, but they're forcing him to testify and saying, if you don't, you are going to be subject to uh, the Roger Goodell Article 46 player discipline. Mm. And so the NF- this case is really – the NFL is trying to dramatically expand the scope of its powers by yeah. dumping – basically everything into the con- conduct detrimental clause. And so the NFLPA really needs to stand up, say, no, we're not doing this period and fight it. Unfortunately, though, the, it's particularly since Harrison and Peppers and Matthews, at least, are big time players. You know, yeah. these are star players. Seems like you know, Goodell's just, you know, uh, increasing his power more. Just like, yeah, yeah that's and exactly it, right. It, it's it's so I mean, like you said, the story's been recanted, so it's not like it's really has any credibility and, now, and this right? This all happened like back during the Super Bowl time of year. It wasn't. Yeah, that's right. I mean, it, it was makes before no that. Sense really, that we're refocusing on it randomly now. And again, the real point here is that this is this it, to the extent there is a legitimate report, which there isn't. Right. But if it was, it would be it would be subject to the PED policy, the performance enhancing drug policy, not under Article Forty Six. You yeah. know, this is an example of Roger Goodell running roughshod over the player discipline issue because, like I've always told you guys, the NFL is the eight hundred pound gorilla. Right. You know, in all things legal, and this is another example of how they not are. Not Harambe, used, though. Pardon me. Not Harambe, though. Yeah. Uh, oh, Harambe the gorilla. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Because he didn't he die? Yes, <laughs> Harambe's yeah. dead. Yeah. No, this is like. King Kong climbing the uh, you know the Empire State Building here, mm. so it's really something that I will end it here, but because we need to move on, but right, it's really right. something that the NFLPA needs to, to stand up for, say no, and when the negotiations for the next collective bargaining agreement comes on, they really need to um, to stick to their guns because Roger Goodell, in my opinion, here is just dramatically overreached with the and scope of his powers here. When that time comes, I, I think it's pretty safe to say that there there's going to be a long holdout, maybe. Yeah, I, uh, it not going to be football for a while, I don't think, because this CBA is, is flawed big time. Yeah, yeah, it, and it's it flawed in in ways that both help the uh, hurt the players and ways that hurt the teams in general. You know, we we've talked repeatedly about the lack of contact in practice being an issue, and a lot of the rules by what you can and cannot do in practice hurting player development now. Yeah, you know, there's a lot of stuff that needs to be changed. Yeah. And yeah. Oh, yeah. I agree. Th- this is what happens when you let you know too many lawyers get in the way of a what is an entertainment venue. 
essentially. Well, you know, it's not really the lawyers in, in this case. I got. Oh, I always blame the just, lawyers. Well, yeah, but that's not really what it is in this case. It's mm-hmm. that the NFL owners, uh, the, the NFLPA is a weak union, and the reason everybody says that is they've continually rolled over on right. issues. They rolled over on a salary cap back in the what late eighties, mm-hmm. uh, early nineties rather. You know, yeah, it was about 93, 94 time frame. You know, the the other leagues have not rolled over on other league unions have not rolled on that. Right. You know, the the MLB uh, has a very soft cap. The only thing that happens is the teams pay a small fine. You know, if they go over the you know the NBA has a has no a soft has a fairly hard cap, but they've got bird rights, right. which allows teams to pay you know dramatically more th- for their own players, so they but can just also roll right over the on cap that too. In the yeah, but but there there is, but the uh, made um, NBA teams have a have much greater flexibility right. to retain their own players, mm-hmm. and the in in the NBA contracts are about ninety five percent of them are fully guaranteed. Um, M- MLB contracts are one hundred percent guaranteed. Right, and um, you know NFL isn't. And so anyway, it's it, we can talk more about that when it comes on. I just want yeah. Well, no, keep going. I was, you're fine. Keep going. Oh, okay. I also just want to real quick hit Joey Bosa because it's interesting that Joey right. Bosa is, um, he's, you know, been the longest holdout of any player since a rookie since the CBA, you know, it was instituted with the rookie uh, slotted salaries. Okay. Right. And what's going on in case anybody's wondering, first of all, Joey Bosa is the son of a former player. So he has money. You know, and he's not in a position where he needs to, you know, feed himself. He doesn't need to buy his mom a house, anything like mm-hmm. that. So he's financially secure already. But what's happening here is that um, there's two things. It's one, there's something called offset. It's not the salary he's arguing about. Right, because that's set. It's the, yeah, it's the structure of the sign- signing bonus and its offset language. Mm-hmm. The Chargers have a history of of prorating their signing bonuses mm-hmm. or structuring rather their signing bonuses. So the players don't get it all up front. They get it year by year. Right. Not every team does that. Some pe- teams just hand over the $15 million check right up front. That's not how the chargers operate. And so there's something called offset language in, in the standard player con most of the standard player contracts, which says that if a player gets cut in the middle of his rookie year, um, the, the uh, salary, the guaranteed signing bonus part can be offset by the amount of money he gets paid by his second team that signs him. Because everybody, you know, most of these guys are going to get a second chance. And what that does is that's going to limit the amount of total dollars the player gets. And Mm -hmm. so that's what Bosa's arguing about. Bosa does not want offset language. He wants to collect his entire signing bonus and his second, the amount of his second contract. And the Chargers just refuse to do it. Um, mm-hmm. and Bosa's set in stone because he doesn't need the money. Andrew Luck argued about this in his rookie contract right. and eventually rolled on it because, mm-hmm. you know, he did. Yeah. No, he didn't. His father is a, it was the athletic director at University of West Virginia. He's yeah, a but, big hotshot lawyer. He did, Andrew Luck did not need the money either. Well, but his, fa- his father being Andrew, an athletic director is probably not the same money as a former NFL player. I'm, Andrew Luck's father is loaded. Okay. He's doing okay. I know Andrew Luck's father. He's doing. He's he's not Donald Trump, you know. But sure. I mean, he's got a lot of money. He didn't need the money, and that's the same as Joey Bosa. Well, and we just revealed Steve knows Andrew Luck's father somehow. <laughs> I do know Andrew Luck's father a little bit. He's not like on my Christmas card list or anything. Oh, okay. But okay, no. <laughs> Steve's Christmas card list is uh, could be very interesting if he really wanted it to be, though. We know that. <laughs> yeah, it could be. It could be. Yeah. Well. Uh, you know, that does it for some of that outside the uh, Redskins locker room stuff. But uh, you know what? Let's focus on the game. Uh, you know, we all have watched it now. I've watched it twice. Steve watched it twice. I think Robbie probably watched it frame by frame when he watched it. Um, so, Yeah, I had tons of chatter on Twitter on, uh, what was it, Saturday morning. Saturday morning. Yeah. 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 Why don't we start with Robbie then? Let's start offense. Robbie, what do you think? What are your overall kind of big picture thoughts? Mm-hmm. The run running game looked better with Matt Jones um, for the time until he got hurt. Um, right. I was encouraged by that. Our running game did seem better. People Overall. have been talking about it, it, it. Well, yeah, but running game did seem better, and people kind of mentioned this also on Twitter the other day, but it seemed better when they had Laval at left guard and Spencer uh-huh. Long at center. Right. It, it, the running game definitely seemed to pick up a little bit with the, with that uh uh, I guess lineup, but um, 
Yeah, I was pretty pleased overall. I mean, I was surprised when I saw the healthy scratches, but uh, I like it. You know, I, I think it was very smart of Jay Gruden to do that. You got all these backup guys that you need to see more of and get them more experience, mm -hmm. and, and it, it kind of paid off. I mean, we still won the game, which doesn't really matter, but – you know, you won with, with your backups and your starters didn't really do much. I hated it, by the way. I hated the fact that Jay Gruden did this. I definitely think the first team should have at least taken, you know, a series or two and then get them out there. You know, you know there's uh, there's a group of these players that are, you know, to date have really haven't played at all, you know, other than three or four plays. You know, I do think they need to get some time. I, I, you know, I, I get what he was doing, you know, let's preserve, you know, Let's not get everybody injured, and we still had Matt Jones injured anyway, and we can talk about that. But yeah, yeah. I, I think that the first team should have at least played a series or two, well, in my see, opinion. I mean, they're going to get tons of uh, you know prep and experience for the season next week in the third right. game. That they're they're probably going to play the half, the first half. If, sure. if so anything. they'll get what five or six series. Yeah, and that's going to yeah. be their entire preseason. Well, if it's the first half, it's the first half, or you know. You know if they come out stale in the first week and we end up losing, then yes, you can bring, blame Jay Gruden for how he handled the preseason. But I, I personally think it's a smart move because you don't want to take a chance on getting these guys hurt in a meaningless game where they, you know, they get their experience during training camp and in the practices. The preseason really is just a, I don't know. It's it's, it's, you don't really get anything out of it with your starters because they're not going hard for one thing. Because they don't want to get hurt, it, it just doesn't. It's not necessary. Uh, and I think, uh, well, Steinberg had a great article about this whole uh, topic. Washington Post, in the Washington Post, Sports blog, and he really Steinberg. breaks down a lot of interesting perspectives on is this where the NFL is going to go? Because they want to get rid of two preseason games anyway. Uh, well, let's and, let's be clear about something. Yeah, the they NFL doesn't want to get with either two yeah. regular season or a playoff games. The NFL does not want to get the players' association wants to get rid of two preseason <laughs> right, okay, games. It would be a the NFL wants right. games. Yeah. right, right, right. But here's what I think. I, I like this approach. I think you need to augment it by having your first stringers play more in game one. So give them a full quarter in game one, rest them game two, give them a half in game three, and give them one drive in game four, or even rest them game four, depending on what you think you need to do. Yeah. I think that will be the approach going forward. You know, it gives them roughly the same amount of playing time that way in the end, but it lets them rest up between each week's preseason game. And I think, you know, rest early on is so important for these players who are just going to get ground down in the regular season. Um, so I like it in that regard. I also like it for one other reason. What did we need to work on this game? It wasn't Kirk in the passing game. It was running the ball. How do we know Run that? Blocking. We didn't. We didn't see the first string passing offense more than about four plays and last they went, week. Well, we saw more than four plays because Kirk went five for five. five, for five. He went. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I mean, the, he went one series. Yeah. You but, know, but but point is, you know, you you, I think you have to have a little bit of time. You know, in one series doesn't cut it. I don't think. I, I mean, I, Robbie's a guy who's played at a high level. You know, I'll but take Robbie's word for it. But. Here's the thing. You can practice so much more in the passing game in training camp with the way the rules are now. Like, it doesn't make well, sense. It you, almost you doesn't make sense to practice standards. running the ball with how little hitting they do. <laughs> like, it, it, w it would make more sense to just run the ball every play in preseason just to get that warmed up. Yeah. You know? Yeah, it would. So, um, I, let's, I, let's I, like it. I like the approach we took by running a lot with Matt Jones and we can talk about some of the other issues because I feel like with Jones hurt right now, we have nobody behind him. Um, well, yeah, let's, first of all, Jones went seven carries, 31 yards mm -hmm. along of, of nine. That's an average of 4.4 yards per carry. Keith Marshall, 10 carries, 26 yards, which is obviously 2.6 yards per carry. Right. Chris Thompson, four for 18 yards. Robert Kelly, three carries, eight yards. Mac right. Brown, two carries, seven yards. Uh, Colt McCoy had a few scrambles in there that counted yeah, as he had runs. That one uh, sweet Nate scramble where he did the spin move and yeah. the juke move, like he's playing. That's Madden. pretty sweet. Yeah. yeah, it looked to me on that play that Ty Inseki tripped on himself, which is why he had to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a busted play, but he yeah. got yeah. out of it. Um, the uh, the thing but, I worry about is Thompson. Like you, you said, he had 18 yards on four carries. 
carries 18 yards. Yeah. yeah, three of those carries he got either negative one or no yards. It <laughs> he didn't do anything. He well, the blocking wasn't run. great either. That's the what blocking Jones wasn't did great on too. either on those plays. And that was Jones also, by the way. I mean, Jones had, you know, two or three carries that didn't go anywhere. We had the long, the, the nine-yard one. He had, um, yeah, but you know, he, what, one carry in the, in the A-gap for about four yards. Well, he had it, one that know. was a fumbled handoff by Colt. Uh, Cheisman blamed Colt. I couldn't tell, honestly, who was at fault. But Theisman blamed Colt, so I guess yeah. we'd go with that. Yeah, and that's what I'm going with, too, because based off of what yeah. Cheisman said, which is, you know, it's on the quarterback if the – the Nate handoff. Sudfeld one in the second half was definitely on on Sudfeld. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. The standoff. Yeah. But, <laughs> but okay. But in terms of Jones, you know, I'm glad he did better. It's um, it's it's only seven carries. Right. You know, he's had what ten carries or something all off season mm-hmm. or preseason. Um, he didn't. He I think he validated. Forget his health. We'll talk about his health. I think he validated the idea that he's our best running back, for better or for worse. Mm-hmm. He is our best running back. Um, I don't think he showed. He still hasn't really showed me anything to, to say that he's an above average running back. I think if the hole is there, he can hit it. Mm-hmm. I think he should be better than he is based on his physical characteristics. Mm-hmm. You know, like the the one, like I think it was the second carry that was the one up the a gap. He just you know got crushed by the linebacker. You know, for yeah. the stomp, yeah, yeah. a big running back like that him should at least be able to fall forward, bowl over the linebacker to a certain extent, gain a, another couple of yards when you hit dead on like that, Robbie. So Robbie's yeah. Raising his hand up. Yeah, I think Matt Jones, he, I think he thinks himself too much of a, you know, shifty, elusive back. He doesn't right. play to his size like he should. Like there was that, there was that play. He tried to run around. Uh, I think it was a linebacker or no, it was Darrell Revis who tackled him. Uh, the, the one to, that was a, a sweep on the right side. Yeah, and Darrell yeah. Revis, you know, scooped his legs out from underneath him for the right. tackle. He should have just, you know, bowled him over. I mean, if you're gonna, if you got Darrell Revis coming at you and you're a big Matt Jones, you should just. You know, just destroy him and go right through him. But but instead, instead he, what he did is tried to run around him. He didn't yeah, really have this. He tried to do his a stiff arm and go around, and it just it didn't work out. Just See, go right through Darrell Revis. It, it's funny he does that with corners. He tries to evade a cornerback, but then when he's trying to go against linebackers or defensive ends or something, that's the guy he wants to bo- try and bowl over, and he can't. But you know what? Though? They're, they're he's bigger the size of a linebacker. Well, I don't know. I mean, he's what six? Is he six two six, or six three? Six, six two. Mm-hmm. And he's about two thirty almost, isn't he? I mean, yeah. he's a big boy. He's not small. He yeah, ought to be able to take on. And defensive ends are still going to be bigger than that these days. It seems like, aren't they? Some of them. Some of them. Most of m- most defensive ends. Yeah. 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 I mean, but point is, if there's a running back, it can take on a linebacker. It's him. Sure. You know. But I'm, cool. against a linebacker, I'm okay with you trying to get around him. Against a, you know. <laughs> not against a corner. A corner just runs yeah. over, like you said. Exactly. Yeah. So, uh, you know, and now he's got his injury, you know, AC joint sprain. Robbie, have you ever sprained a shoulder? No, I've sprained my knee before, but that's about it. Okay. So we don't know. We're recording this on Sunday morning. And as of Sunday morning, we do not have any additional information really as to the scope of his injury. I, I guess, was it, Robbie, you had, was it Mike Jones? Yeah. He said, about it? he said it's not that serious. It looks like. They're not sure if he'll miss – If he's probably not going to miss significant time, mm-hmm. but they don't really have a firm update yet. Well, I uh, when it happened and they released what it was, I did tweet right at Rick Snyder because, you know, one of the nice things about us having friends in the news is we can ask them things. Um, right. And Snyder said that uh, two to three weeks is pretty normal to be out, so that would be preseason. Um, but the real issue is that once you're back in – healthy it still hurts for months like you know you'll be healed physically but you'll feel it for a while so the best case scenario then is that he's going to be back for the pittsburgh game Mm -hmm. i think it sounds based on that that it's almost impossible to say that he's going to be uh up next week against the bills and certainly not in the fourth preseason preseason. yeah that's what rick (laughs) was saying which is fine by me, really, because I want to see these other guys, you know, get some experience and you know, kind of prove themselves that we have at least a little bit of depth at the running back position. Yeah, because uh, Robbie, yeah, I mean, night. we had a little bit of conversation before we went on the air here about this, and and I mentioned that I thought Keith Marshall was kind of playing himself, maybe off the roster. Mm-hmm. I mean, what do you see in Rob Kelly and Keith Marshall? I mean, I haven't seen enough, really. Uh, Kelly, I think, is better than Marshall, at well, least vision wise. 
game one, right, Kelly? Yeah. 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 And Marshall obviously has that speed that you want in a running back, but um, I don't know. Both of them, to me, just haven't shown enough to really be confident in them. Right. I want to have Chris Thompson do more and take on a bigger role, but he's he's just not big enough. He can't handle you know, running in between the tackles a lot. So you have to be selective in the carries that he gets, unfortunately, which and I, people, think, I think he's yeah, a good people back. Forget that, people forget that Chris Thompson had an injury history, yeah. you know, his first two years also. Well, and I wonder with Chris Thompson, if we know Jones is done for the preseason and, you know, who knows how much more, uh, do you almost want to hold out somebody like Chris Thompson from getting too many plays in preseason now just so you have your second – He's probably your second best guy right now that we know. Oh, of. he he definitely is. I think right. he definitely is. So, do we want to? Do you almost want to limit him so that you don't risk him getting injured? That'd be smart. I mean, let uh, Kelly Marshall and Mac Brown handle the, the 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 rotation, just like in and out. The three of them all game. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm wondering. I, I yeah, I I don't disagree with you. I think it's uh, we we'll also have Kelsey Young out there too, and Joe. Oh Kier, yeah, yeah. just. Yeah. yeah, Joe Carriage is, he's you know, I mean, he's, yeah, I mean, but, you know, let's give him a couple of carries as long as we're doing it, you sure, know, sure. let him play. But but on Marshall, I, I think Marshall is the guy that the fans are most excited about just because of his physical characteristics, mm-hmm. you know, and we on this show and others have thrown around that he was starting over Todd Gurley for a year in high school or college rather. Right. Um, but he, he's disappointed um, in that we haven't seen really that potential. Um, I think you're right, Robbie, in saying he doesn't seem to really have the vision uh, right now. He's kind of got the same problem as Jones does. You know, if there's a hole that's there, he can hit it. Um, but they're, because not, he's they're just, not creators. Right. They don't yeah, it, Marsh, right. And Marshall's another guy who's got, you know, the size, and he ought to be able to create, and he doesn't really do that. Rob Kelly, I think, is better at getting the yardage that's there, mm-hmm. you know, if, if there's a crease, he's going to hit it, and he's going to gain a few yards. And that's not the that same can't be said for Keith Marshall right now. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, let's let's uh, go into good. let's go into other players that kind of okay. stood out too. Um, Jameson Crowder finally came back and yeah. had a really good game. He, yeah. he looked like the Crowder that we were used to all season. You know, mm-hmm. just getting open, making good plays. His touchdown was called back, unfortunately, but. Crowder's the real deal. I'm I'm still very excited about what he can do yeah, as a he slot got guy. Field on one play too, which mm-hmm. I mean, for as much as we loved what he did last year, it was all you know short yardage, you know dink and dunk type stuff. You know, it's nice to see him get 15 yards downfield or something like that and yep. get the ball. Yep. Yeah, oh, it absolutely is, and and uh, you know I, I think he's a legit starting wide receiver. Yeah. You know, the NFL is what we have in him. I, I think. Um, uh, Ryan Grant got a lot of playing time. He had some good mm-hmm. plays. He had the one the one play where he was heads up play. Really, yeah, where he used his body to to stay off the ground. He rolled over the defender and right. and was able to that was a great play and was able to stand back up. That, That's that a great was, play. That was a little highlight kind of real mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Rashad Rashad Ross, Ross. Yeah. Yeah. Although one thing we got someone's gotta sit Rashad Ross down and say, Listen, I know you're the D Jackson clone thing. Stop running backwards. He, he did that yeah, yeah. punt what, what, return, what and he about? did that when he caught the ball around the goal line at one point, and he starts yeah. running like three yards back to get around somebody. It's the NFL. You're not going to get around a guy doing that. Yeah. Well, and that's that's a situation where he should have taken the yardage that's there, fallen yeah. forward for two yards. Exactly. Um, real fast, R- Ross had four receptions, 58 yards. Grant had four receptions, 43 two yards. Two touchdowns, too. Yeah, yeah I'm the, sorry, two yeah. touchdowns. Yeah, big deal. Uh, James and Crowder, three receptions, 38 yards, mm-hmm. and it goes down from there. I'll just point out that Kendall Thompson had the the big touchdown at the end, the one-handed grab. Um, Maurice, I, sorry, Maurice Harris is he's shining too. I mean, he didn't get 13, any like, yeah, yeah he, he's he's looking really good to me too. He we got some serious depth at this receiving position. Yeah, Maurice yeah. Harris had 21 snaps. He may have only had one reception, but he was on the field for 21 offensive well, snaps. Now he's the one who got the penalty thrown on him when when Crowder caught that touchdown in the first drive. But yeah. other than that, he did play well. He played you know? well last week, too. Yeah, yeah. I mean... I, you know, it, it's a situation where, like we said, I mean, we've got, um, you know, what, four receivers locked in for sure. Probably. Uh, Garcon, Jackson, Crowder, and like it or not, Grant is on made the team. And so we've got, you know... Um, 
what Rashad Ross, Valdez Showers, Maurice Harris, Kendall Thompson, TJ Thorpe, Des Stewart, mm-hmm. all fighting for at most two slots. At most. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, it's and probably I think more likely likes, one. I don't think we'll carry yeah. more than six. Yeah. We're not going to carry more than six, but I mean, if we have four locks, there's one, maybe well, we two have five slots. Locks. I think Ross. I don't. I don't think Ross isn't going to be off this roster either. Well, and okay. You, if that's a Dachshund. we're not. Oh, I did forget Dachshund. So we really have five definite locks, we unless Dachshund goes spot. on IR. Unless yeah. Dachshund goes on IR. Yeah. You know, which he could. Yeah. Uh, maybe yeah. now's a good time to talk about Dachshund. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I mean, do we want to talk about anything that anything else we saw? No, let's on finish. You know defense? what? Let's finish. Yeah. yeah. Well, let's do. Let's, let's talk go about defense. quarterbacks. Okay. Let's talk quarterbacks first. Oh, okay. Quarterbacks. Okay. You want to talk quarterback? Quarter? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Colt McCoy looked pretty good. Um, yeah, I think Colt McCoy looked like, like his knee looking. buckled though. Did you see that? I did not see that on that interception. It did. Yeah, his knee buckled as he tried to throw it away. Uh-huh. I don't think implying he... that he was trying to throw it out of the end zone and he didn't because his knee yeah, buckled. Yeah, uh-huh. he he put a quote out there that his knee buckled, and I watched it again, and you could definitely see, like I guess as he tried to plant to throw it away, his knee buckled and it affected his throw. So I mean, well, maybe he was trying to throw it out of the side of the end zone, and I think he, that's what he was trying to do, gotcha. but it yeah. it didn't work out that way. It looked like a terrible decision if yeah. you ignore yeah. that. I hadn't heard that. That's a good input. Yeah, um, but I thought thing basically I'll say about Colt. He had that one deep ball where he was trying to heave it to Ross, and it just died in midair. And you realize, yeah. okay, Colt cannot throw it more than 35 yards. If he threw it better, like if he – I mean, he had the safety and the corner beat. If, right. if he threw a better ball there, it would have been a touchdown. But I, I, it looked more like an arm strength thing. Like yeah. he, he just can't throw it past 35, that, and that's I, why yeah, I he's think, a backup. Yeah. Kirk Cousins definitely has a stronger – Cousins doesn't have the strongest arm in the NFL. He's probably average, but, I mean, he's definitely has a stronger arm than Colt, too. He has a yeah, blowout yeah, yeah. arm for sure. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll say this about Colt, though. I think we have a really good backup in him. Um, I don't think there should be – anyone should be too worried if Kirk goes down. I mean, yes, right. things will change with the offense, but we got a very reliable backup who can right. come in and make some plays for us. Like We've seen can, him against Dallas last year. Up. Almost every backup, but not all of them. Yeah. You know? I agree with you, Robbie. I think he's a great backup, and he runs and he runs Jay Gruden's system very well. He fits Jay Gruden's system well. You know the the strengths of Colt McCoy are he can run the short passing game. He can get he can release the ball quickly. He knows how to scan the field uh, well. So mm-hmm. Colt fits. I just let you know we, we've seen a lot uh, you know of chatter with the fans this week about Cousins and the deep ball, and you know oh my God he can't throw it. Let's just clarify right now. The deep ball is not Kirk Cousins' strength. Yeah. So I don't think we can all agree on that. But he's not a below. He's not below average at that. He's not terrible at it. No. It's just not his strength. That's all we're saying. The reasonable people out there will say it's just not his strength, and that's it. He mm-hmm. can do it, people. It's not that he's terrible at it. And if you're saying that, you're wrong. Right. Yeah. He's just that's just not the strength of his game, and that's it. He's an a you know, it's he's average at that. You know, it's not Robert Griffin who had a cannon. He's not mm-hmm. that. You know. That's sure. all about. So let's talk about Sudfeld real quick. Yeah. He was terrible, I think it's safe to say, for everything except that final drive. It wasn't pretty, but he got the job done. Yeah. He but he yeah. was three for nine for eight yards at one point that before that drive. Because I, I was well, like just starting to count. Know if, yeah. It's uh he was ten for twenty, seventy seven yards. Uh, with the one touchdown, uh, quarterback rating of seventy six point five. He was look. He's a rookie. He's inconsistent. Right. Um. You know. I. I he's got the physical tools to be good. You but know. Someday. I, I'm he just needs saying, let's hold off on work. the it's Nate Sudfeld in the future talk right now. Nate because, Studfeld, yeah. as they're saying now. Oh, Studfeld. Oh, is that what it is? That's the nickname now. Okay. When it wasn't, you know, the last drive wasn't like <clears throat> a flawless. No. Two minute execution. You know. I mean, the 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 game calling crew in Theismann and in uh, Larry Michael. Not Larry Michael. Who's uh, in the booth now? Chick Hernandez. Chick. Chick Hernandez. You know, pointed out mm-hmm. that you know there were too much time between the plays. Chicken thighs, as they're now going to be called. Yeah. They, they, but that, but you pointed at them. You got to <laughs> give him. You got to give Sudfeld credit on that touchdown pass. That was a great. Oh, that pass. was a great pass. Yeah, but he he really did struggle for the first quarter yes, and a did. half of his playing time. Um, all right, let's move on to defense. Uh, defense. Mar- Martrell Spate. Martrell Spate. Yeah, he had a good game. Uh, I think we're really deep at this inside linebacker position. Uh, I think s- someone on the top end is going to be on his way out. Mm. More specifically, uh, Perry, what's Riley. Perry, Perry Riley. Perry yeah. Riley. 
Well, yep. his his Perry Riley's salary cap is too big to, to justify him not starting. Right. That's the thing. Perry Riley's got a five million dollar salary, over five million dollar salary cap hit for 2016, mm-hmm. uh, and they're just not going to keep that right. if he's you, not a star. I mean, you got him. You got Perry Riley in the mix with Will Compton, Mason Foster, mm-hmm. Martrell Spate, who's playing really well. Compton, um, by the way, I believe sat out the whole game, didn't he? Yeah, he did. He yeah. did. So yeah. that's that why. He's that, that's why. That's why Spate played he, he, he right. was with the starters that game if you, if you look so at the you, nine guys who sat out there are stars yeah you know so you had you have will compton mason foster martrell spate sua cravens basically is an inside linebacker right now right terrence garvin right. who's a special teams ace uh, you know he's kind of the odd man out here and i would like to see us like try to work a trade in with some team that needs a linebacker somewhere if we're not, not going to get much for him. Well, no, um, no, yeah, no. That but kind of anything, cap, can we get a third that, string running back? We need that right now. Yeah, package deal type thing. Yeah. But anything you can get for him with that before cutting him would be nice. Because yeah, I don't think he's a better. He's it's, but if you look at value added mm-hmm. of player over salary cap, his number. You know, if you if you assign a value, which uh, a notional value, which we won't do because we're not PFF, we don't invent right, right, right. stats. But if you assign the like the notional value of Mason Foster over his salary cap is much higher than Perry Riley. It, it's it's in the black is basically what you can say, right? Yeah, and I'm not sure Perry Riley is. No, you know, is is he a starting? Is he an average starting linebacker? Probably. You know, okay, maybe, maybe probably. Yeah. But at the salary cap hit versus Mason Foster's one point one million dollar hit, right. there's just not even it's not even really a question to yeah. me. Yeah, if you if you were to say they're all average to above average, our, our top four guys, he's the one that stands out then because that's yeah. Oh, cap. definitely. I like to ask Robbie about more about Spate though because mm-hmm. it seemed yeah. to, to my own expert eyes that Spate was kind of all over the place. You know, he he wasn't. Uh, you know, a Patrick Will of star out there, but he was kind of in the middle of everything, a legit middle linebacker. What'd you think? He, yeah, he looks legit to me. He's 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 pretty explosive. He flies to the football. He delivers a hit almost every time he gets to, you know, touch the running back or whoever has the ball. Um, I'm a big fan of his. I really like what he brings. He's very emotional, raw player. You know, right. he brings that raw emotion to the game. And obviously, you've seen the the clip of him last week leading the linebackers in the pregame chant type thing. Right. He's he's got yeah. that leadership quality to him. He could be our future. I mean, I, I look at what he was doing very similar to how Will Compton was his rookie, and uh, I guess he his really his first two seasons where he was just playing preseason and on the practice squad. Uh, like you said, he flies around, he gets the ball, um, physical. But, you know, there are little technique things that he clearly is going to have to work on to become an impact player, I think, long term. Yeah, I, I think he's a little different than Will Compton because Martrell Spade is a draft pick. And so I think the team has – Will Compton was undrafted free agent. So the team probably expects a little bit more out of Martrell Spade than they did of Will Compton in the beginning. It, you know, um, but, but I, I'd like to point out real quick that um, Terrence Garvin made the most of his opportunity – you know, in the second half, he was flying around, you know, granted it was in the third and fourth quarter, but, you know, he, he certainly was doing a lot to show that he deserves to be on the roster. Yeah, absolutely. And um, our, our secondary had a better game than last last week, too, for the most part. Um, still, yeah. uh, Kendall Fuller got burned a little bit by that on that one play, but, I mean, there were other things that he showed last night that made me very – excited about what we have in him he had that one play where he you know shed the block and disrupted that quick screen pass to the receiver yeah. he's got he's got a good nose for the you know for the football good high you know, iq type uh, you know he's a high iq type player so I, I like what we have in him too right well and let's just talk numbers real fast you know uh, i mean the locks we have on the roster for inside linebacker compton Cravens, Foster, Spate, I think are locks, right? Mm-hmm. And so the question is, do we carry a fifth inside linebacker? Uh, not unless they're special team stud. Yeah, yeah, uh, it's I mean, possible. Yeah. And you know, because th- that your special teams is made up of good tight ends, good linebackers, and then corners on the edge to be gunners. That's you know. Yeah, let's talk. Um, let's talk defensive backfield real fast. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, <laughs> Dunbar had a good game. He redeemed himself. I feel like. Yeah, Will Blackman had the nice interception. Yeah. Was yeah, Dunbar had a good pass. Dunbar had a great pass breakup. He did. 
where he Blackman just got, was the one that had the interception. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, D. Hall had that nice little uh, fumble, fumble recovery. recovery. Yeah. Which was caused that's, by Martrell Spate. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah, yeah. was. That's kind of classic D. Hall, though. You know, he's he's kind of right, always right there in the middle of things. He's mm-hmm. a playmaker. You know, it's. I think it's kind of amazing how well that D'Angelo Hall has stepped into and embraced a safety role. Right. Yeah. Uh, and not only embraced it, but he's he's become a quality safety overnight. But you but know. if he can kind of just do what he does well, which is be around mm-hmm. the ball. Yep. Kind of sit behind it a little bit, you know. He's going to get those chances for fumbles mm-hmm. and interceptions, like we saw. So yeah, you know, he, well, he's I'm kind not of saying he'll be a Pro Bowler, but you know, if he can get three, four turnovers for us this season, that's a good thing. We got an interesting uh, battle here at corner, though. Uh, Deshaun Phillips has kind of gone under the radar, but he's mm-hmm. our starting nickel corner right now. Yeah, and so you have Freeland, Phillips, and Norman. And then you have Greg Toller, Dunbar, Kendall Fuller, Fuller. and Dunbar. Yeah. How many cornerbacks are you going to keep? Well, you got to keep at least six, I think. Yeah. It seems to me. I mean, so you've got obviously the the locks, um, yeah, Breland, Norman, Fuller's a lock. Um, so that's three. Um, I but other names. I think Toller's a lock. Toller's probably a lock. Yeah, Toller. And so really, the battle may be. For two spots, the battle may be Phillips, uh, Jeremy Harris, Quentin Dunbar, Lloyd Carrington. Right. There's your battle. And and I think certainly Carrington and, Har- and Harris are behind in the battle. And so what you're talking about is... Practice squad do, material. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do, so what we're talking about mm-hmm. is Deshaun Phillips, Quentin Dunbar, do they keep both? Yeah. I yeah. think they would. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and I'd like to one. ask... Where does Toller fit in? I mean, Toller's played his way on the roster. If, if Phillips is lining up at the nickel cornerback, I think, um, yeah, I think basically Toller would be our next man up for the outside corner spot. Mm-hmm. If Breland or up. Norman needs a break, he, I think, he would be the next guy in. He's he's proved to be a really good man uh, guy. He he locks down guys mm-hmm. pretty much every time. It seems like the the yeah. nice thing is all these guys are pretty good quality, and you can kind of move them in and out based on the situation. You know, Dunbar's got his size, so maybe you say, well, this week we're going against a bigger wide receiver. Let's put Dunbar on him because he'll match up better. You can do a lot of that kind of stuff. Yeah, I I think um, it's time to mention Kendall Fuller a little bit. He's been inconsistent. He hasn't been great. Hmm. Um, He was the one draft. Yeah, he was kind of the one draft pick I questioned, if I recall, back in in the draft is why do we really need this guy? Um, I think he's proven that he's kind of a rookie and he needs, he's got potential. He's made some good plays, Mm -hmm. but he's not really ready yet. I don't think, you know, to be a contributor. No. Yeah. Which is fine. Cause we got, uh, we got guys on the roster that can, you can plug and play while he's, you know, figuring it out and Mm -hmm. getting used to the NFL. Yeah. Yeah. We don't really need him to be ready right now. Let's be honest. We, it's kind of the same with our receiving core, and it's an embarrassment where it's like, well, we drafted this guy really high, but we don't really need him this year. He's in the same position as Doxon, basically. He may be he may yeah. be in a better position than Doxon in that regard because we, if Doxon was healthy, right. we could use Doxon. Fuller, we truly don't need him right this year. Doxon could play a role if Doxon could ever get out there. Mm. Yeah, you know, because sure. we do need the you know yeah, maybe it's not threat. Yeah, 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 yeah. Fair enough. Let's hit. Let's hit before we move on to Docs, and let's hit special teams real fast. You know, a trust way is like the preseason MVP. Yeah. Of the team, you know that guy is just booming punts. We, he we, had the one punt, a seventy-four yard punt. That's crazy. I don't think He's, we really saw much of uh, Hunter, or not Hunter, uh, Hop. Sorry. Yeah, Hopkins. I was, go, I was going duster. way back there with Hunter. <laughs> uh, yeah, Duster. Uh, but you know, we really do have probably the best kicker punter combo that we've had in a decade at this point. It may be one of the better kicker punter combos in the NFL. It might be. At this point. Yep. Um, yep. I think Jameson Crowder continues to not impress as we, the punt we, return. I don't know who is going to return punts for us right now. No well, one looks not. like they want to. People, not, need, not. people need a block on that too. I mean, yeah. I understand he's not doing well returning either, but the blocking's not been very good either. Like as soon as he caught that one ball that he muffed, well, I mean, that the was guy a was right in his face. Powder, though. That should have been a fair catch. It should have been, yes. Mm-hmm. But uh, still, you know, it, in the other plays, when Ross tried to return a punt, there was yeah. nowhere to go. People aren't yeah. blocking very well. Well, see, Ross, I think, did a better job on that play of getting of trying to get a few f- yards. Mm-hmm. Crowder 
is more sort of an east to west runner, not a north south. Antoine Randall runner. L style. Yeah. Yeah, that's my, that's my big issue with Crowder. I, I don't mean to be overly negative about him, but he just really isn't good at it. He's and yeah, a the very blocking good wide receiver. We'll we'll take that, yeah. but he's yeah. not a punt returner. Uh, I, I think they need to let TJ Thorpe have some more opportunities at punt returner. Yeah. He got some good yards when yeah. he got his chances. What yeah. we need, what we, what I, and this is just me being weird. I want to see a running back back there doing punt returns. I feel like running backs go north south and hit people. We had that guy, some guy named Brian Mitchell did okay at yeah, punting. Yeah, I, I'm returns. a little bit of a homer for that. Rock Cartwright, remember when he was yeah, doing first forever? Yeah, Rock was good. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, let's move on. Uh, since we're running out of time here, uh, real quick, Jock Doxon still hurt. Uh, Steve, you seem to be really getting worried about it. I, I'm still. Well, I am. I, 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 I'm I, less I, panicked about it. I'll tell you. Well, I, I emailed or, or, or tweet, uh, uh, twittered, tweeted <laughs> at um, our, our our friend of the show, Rich Tandler, and friend of the show, Rick Snyder, two weeks ago about Doxon and said, is it you know time to start thinking about pup list IR? What do the Redskins think about Doxon? At the time, this was right before the first preseason game. They said, no, it's way too early. Don't mm-hmm. worry about it. Well, now the chatter has started about okay. Doxon going to the pup list. You know, I, I think the team – uh, has not been completely forthcoming about his injury, oh, you know, because you know they have not told the public the full truth. Um, you know, he's been he was day listed as day to day in OTAs, if we recall. Right, right. And here it is, what two months later. Um, I fear that because he's a wide receiver, you know, if you were a running back or maybe a an offensive lineman, you mm-hmm. could you know sort of th- those positions seem to have on the offense be able to just sort of step in and go as rookies wide receivers they don't right. you know wide receivers have traditionally struggled as rookies and the more it goes with him not practicing the more it it becomes possible that it's kind of a lost season for Josh Jackson um so my fear is that if he continues to be out he's just not going to be productive this year yeah that's my fear. yeah and i i understand your why you're worried i mean luckily as we've said, we have so much depth at wide receiver this year. If it, if the worst case happens and he's on IR, we're not going to be hurting for wide receivers. You know? Yeah. No, but he does fill a role that we don't have. I mean, he's, right. if, if anybody's ever seen him in person, did you, did you guys see him in person in training camp? No, Either one he was of on you? the pup list. He wasn't hanging out on the sidelines that much. Well, Robbie, you saw him working was, on the side field, right? He was on the side field, but right. it's really far away. Couldn't get real, okay. you know, they look judge like of ants. him. When they're on yeah, the this field. guy. <laughs> this guy is big, people. Yeah, he I is mean, big. if you see the if you saw the photos from the draft day when it was uh, Doxon and and Kendall Fuller and Sue Cravens standing next to each other in the photos, mm-hmm. Doxon was the biggest of the three. Yep, by far. He looked bulkier. He looked taller. He looked bigger. Um, his combination of size and speed is something we don't have. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, I, he I, could. Play a role. <clears throat> you know, it's not like I'm happy that he's hurt. I, you know, I don't want to come across that way, but. Yeah. You know, he's a rookie wide receiver, like you said. It was going to well, take him time anyway. Well, we had a poll on him, too, didn't we, Steve? That's true. Yeah. Yeah. You want to do the poll right sure. now, real Get, fast? Give us those poll numbers. Okay. Uh, poll question this week had to do with Josh Stockson. Um, the question was, because I was just thinking about this, the question was, how productive will Josh Stockson be this year given his injury? The question, the, the uh, categories were, he will become our number one wide receiver. Mm-hmm. Uh, the second one was he will play at some point, but he won't be a factor. Um, third, third choice was he'll become a solid backup over the course of the year. And then the fourth choice is he's going to short term IR. And I included, you know, I was thinking pup list IR, I just can fit it in the Twitter block, but short term IR an unproductive year. So, um, what do you guys think is the future for Josh Doxon this year? <laughs> If you had to vote in the poll, what would you go for? Solid backup, I would say. <clears throat> yeah, I think I don't think he's going to get pup listed in the end. I think if that were the he were going IR or short term IR or pup list, they would have made that move by now. So I'm going to say he does get some playing time. I think he'll be mostly a situational guy for us. You know, put him in the red zone. You know, just yeah. work on that part of his game this year. And hey, if he gets four or five touchdowns that way, rookie year, I'll take it. Um, okay, well, the public, by a, a vote of 39%, thought that he will become a short, a solid backup. Mm. Um, 27% thought he's going to short-term IR, he's going to be unproductive. 
21% said he's going to play at some point, but he's not going to be much of a factor this year. And the very optimistic 13% of you said he will become our number one wide receiver. Um, wow. You know, I think that implies kind of like Jerry Rice level of talent. Right. And I don't know if he has that or not. Um, so that's a, if, if you ask what I would have voted for, um, I he, tend to lean towards pup list. I think he's probably going to get pup listed. Okay, so you're in that 27%. Yeah, I think I'm in the 27%, Which, unfortunately. Uh, we'll, we'll say it's now 28% because Steve's in there. <laughs> so <they get laughs> I'd like little... to, by the way, real quick say on the IR thing, yeah. the rules have changed on IR. You don't have to pre-designate the returning member oh, you on don't? IR. No, okay. the rules changed this year. So you can um, put as many people as you want on IR and designate the short and bring back one player later. Gotcha. You don't have to pre-designate them. So that gives the teams a little bit more flexibility. That, that's such a mm. good little change. You know, if you if you're the pre designation thing never made any sense to me because didn't we pre designate someone and then they had to go full IR and we couldn't bring anybody back? Well, we pre designated Nick uh, Nick Sundberg at one point, didn't didn't we? You know, as the short term, it was, was our long snapper. There was one year where we designated somebody who couldn't come back when we had hoped, and then we couldn't bring anybody back. So that's a good change. Um, mm. Let's move on. Final final thing of the day. Uh, let's talk about that Bills game we got coming up next week. Big game, week three. This is when all the starters will play, so Steve will be happy. Yes. Um, and it's at home, which is nice. You know, the fans won't feel as ripped off as probably the fans last Friday felt. Mm -hmm. um, so well, we got thoughts. the Bills. Yeah, I mean, we've got our, you know, the, the NFL's big mouth coming in right. is Rex Ryan and his brother – uh, Rob. you know, Rob Ryan is the coach. Well, defensive um, coach. Yeah. Yeah. Defensive coach, you know, Ty Tyrod Taylor just signed a, a new contract mm -hmm. and his new contract was a five-year contract that basically boiled down to a one year deal in terms of the salary cap versus dead money. Um, you know, we beat the bills last, last year. Um, I, you know, it's like we have the same, to me, it's the same questions. You know, are we going to, is somebody going to be able to establish a running game? Um, I tend to doubt it. You know, the Bills have a good uh, offense or defensive line, you know, and we're down to no Matt Jones very likely next week. So I don't know how much running game we're going to be able to see unless they bring a veteran in this week. Yeah. I Bigger thing I want to see other than that is how our defense handles Tyrod Taylor. I mean, obviously right. he's, he's, a, he's a playmaker. He makes plays on the run, breaks out of the pocket if, if things break down. And I want to see how we can – how we can t contain him, how the DBs handle, you know, covering him or the, their their guides to prevent him from, you know, making these plays on the run. And, and you know, he, he's a big he's a big play guy. He, he doesn't make a lot of, you know, you yeah, know dink a, and dunks. He's a, he's he's a big play thrower. guy. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I think you're, you make a great point about trying to contain him. Um, mm. I think the Bills game was probably our worst game run performance wise last year. I, I remember looking up numbers at one point, and it stood out that they had, like, 250 rushing yards on us. We had a – we oh, you mean run defense? Yeah, yeah run they defense. Did. It was something like now, that. Now, remember the Bills were the number one rushing team in the NFL right. last year. Though. Because they run the read option with Tyrod Taylor. And right. we all know how that helps your – Plus they got LaShawn McCoy. Right. Right. Yeah, well, but when we had RG3 healthy in 2012, using that same offense, you're going to be the number one rushing – or in the top, yeah. probably. Well, we had Alfred yeah. Morris back then, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. who was on it at his peak. So, anyway. Um, but, but my point well, is, if we can contain the run game, I'll be very happy with what we see. Yeah, there's no doubt. I mean, that was, you know, our big defensive point going into the season, into the preseason, you know, is, is they've got to do better on stopping the run. This, I'll just say that the Jets are a terrible team. If, if this game was any gave us any clue is about the 2016 jets. They're in trouble. Their that, they, situation is rough. Yeah. It is rough. They're running, you know, they didn't run the ball at all in the second half basically, but the, what very little running they did uh, in the first half, you know, they, it was unproductive mm -hmm. and, and they didn't have much carry. So we haven't really been tested really. Uh, uh, you know, the starters have not been tested too much against no. the run this because the Falcons didn't really do too much either last week. So this is going to be the big test in terms of how the running game running defense has really improved. We'll see. Yeah. I, I was, I was gonna, I had it written down here uh, that I was really disappointed. We didn't get to see one of our favorite punching bags from last year, Christian Hackenberg. 
in the game last <laughs> night. Well, that was Bobby apparently favorite the Jets punching fourth back. stringer and hasn't gotten a snap. Well, see, here's the here's the thing. I saw uh, um, Manny Benton brought brought it up on Twitter. He thinks that uh, that the Jets are kind of keeping him low key and just trying to sneak him onto the practice squad by not putting uh, any I film think. out there on him. I think they're trying to. He thinks they're trying to stash him, mm. and uh, which you know I can I can kind of see that too. I mean, the guy has some potential. You know, he has he's got a cannon. some ability. He's yeah. got a cannon. He's got some potential, but his decision making is terrible, and right. his accuracy is terrible. But you know, I think they're maybe just trying to. Mm-hmm. You know, just develop him and, and try to sneak him onto the practice squad and hope that no one, you know. How can, is that you talking about Hackenberg, right? Yeah. I was looking at yeah, something yeah. up. How can they possibly? Hackenberg was a what a second round draft pick. Third. I how think. can any? How can any draft pick that high make it through the practice squad though? Be, because you know? he's probably a poor man's Rex Grossman at this point, so no one really <laughs> is going to take him. Um, Anyway. But but you know but the but the big Ryan my point was in bringing that up the big Ryan Fitzpatrick you yeah. know oh my God he hadn't signed you know the world is you know, going to end mm-hmm. Ryan Fitzpatrick isn't that good no no he's no. okay Cole McCoy outplayed Ryan Fitzpatrick absolutely he did absolutely now had, now the Jets wide receivers yeah. you know have hands of bricks or something because they you know they had what four or five drop passes at him yeah. right in the hands well but, one of them one of them was from Brandon Marshall who basically just didn't want to catch that. Uh, he was he, afraid he, of getting hit. He didn't want to get hit in a preseason yep. game across the middle. So he was like, screw this. I'm not catching this ball. Yeah. yeah it was like Brandon Marshall had the ghost of Sean Taylor lining up on him on that yeah, play. Yeah, yeah. Pretty yeah. obvious what happened. <laughs> um. Yeah. But the Jets, I mean, I can see why they panicked because as bad as Fitzpatrick looked, everyone else looked Gino was rough. Yeah. I don't, I don't think Geno Smith will be in the NFL in a year. So. Uh, yeah. But my point in bringing that up was I didn't mean to go backwards to yeah, the yeah, Jets. Sorry. My point was just that. We haven't been tested in the running game yet, and the Bills are most certainly going to test us. Third preseason game, LaShawn McCoy, Tyrod Taylor, yeah. number one rushing team in the NFL. You know, Stephen Pyle looked better. Stephen Pyle made a couple plays this week and yeah, gave him some pops. Yeah, he got a sack. Um, so we'll see if the new and improved defensive line mm-hmm. can, um, you know, or can do well, or we're going to take a step back. Yeah, you know, I, we'll I think Sue, if, if anyone steps up, it'll be Sue Cravens. I think I a could, speedy linebacker like that can, you know, you can put him in there kind of to fight the read option pretty well. You know, he may be the only player on this draft class that's a contributor this year to any great extent. Maybe. Well, we'll see. I mean, it's we got a long way to go. Oh, I know. <laughs> I mean, but Doxson and, you know, Fuller is going to be buried, you know, no matter we're going to be buried down the roster. Ionitis will be at most a rotation player. Right. Um, who am I missing, you know, out of this group? Sudfeld isn't going to play. Yeah. Yeah. Keith Marshall's not doing well. No. Um, Cravens is kind of the only one that may get significant playing time. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. Um, oh, he will. All right. Well, well we, we really have to wrap up for the this show. Uh, we were on a time crunch here, but you had a quick "Where are they now?" thing you wanted. Yes, let we us have know? a "Where are they now?" Yeah, um, this is courtesy of former Redskins linebacker Robert Henson, who is from Longview, Texas, which is the hometown of none other than Malcolm Kelly mm-hmm. uh, and Trent Williams, by the way. And so, um, I I tweeted at Henson, curious as to what Malcolm Kelly is doing nowadays because he's not playing football, and as it turns out. Uh, Malcolm Kelly owns his own business, which is stationed in and around the Longview area. He owns a shipping company nowadays. Nice. So he's yeah. So he's uh, made something of himself uh, post football, and he seems to be doing fairly well because he owns his own company. So yeah, that's really good for him. I'm glad he's is not he importer, sitting around. Importer, exporter, exporter. But <laughs> I think it's a shipping company. No, it's not. Oh, okay. uh, you know, the company is shipping goods uh, via contract. Is what it ah, seems to be doing. It. So on some trucks. <clears> good for him. Yeah, good for him. That's exactly right. And thanks to Robert Henson for that. He's the source of that. Um, so there you go. Like I said, but when you mentioned you wanted to do that, as long as everyone's got a place where they can take a warm dump and, you know, they're not living under a bridge, you know, I, I don't want bad things to happen to any of our ex-players. So with that, let's wrap up the show. Uh, looking forward to the fun game this next week on Friday night. Uh, and uh, we'll see you guys all next week after that. Bye.